Hey everybody, welcome back to Bonsai Tortoise. For this video, I thought I'd go through how we feed our testudo type species. My goal with this video is to reinforce that variety is key in feeding your tortoises and to show you what commonly found items you can feed your Hermans, your Greek, your, or your marginated tortoises. We'll go through a few weeks worth of feedings where they rarely eat the same thing two days in a row. Hope you enjoy. species so that's your your hermes tortoises like these guys the greek tortoises which are in that enclosure there your marginated tortoises egyptian tortoises and um and stuff like that you know um, i think russians used to fit into the testudo genus but i think they took them out um but it's basically those those tortoises that come from a drier climate uh that don't have access to fruit that don't really eat much protein stuff like that so the number one rule when feeding tortoises is to feed them a variety of things. So don't stick to romaine all the time, don't do any of that stuff. You wanna really feed them uh, a variety of things to make sure that they get that good stuff in their diet. And the, the second rule is to feed them the right things. So your testudo species, they don't need any fruit, they don't need um, any protein. In fact, if you feed them too much of that stuff, it could actually hurt them. Um, so you want to stick to the basics, you know, your, your greens, your weeds, your cactus pads, um, stuff like that. So in the next few days, you're going to see um, basically how I feed my tortoises uh, and different varieties of foods that I use. And hopefully it'll be helpful to you. So let's start with prickly pear. So I grow my own, um, but I don't grow enough of it to sustain um, the needs of the tortoises. So I got to buy it. And then when you get it from the store, it's not as pretty as that. It's usually, it looks like this and it's kind of eh, whatever. But uh, you can get the spineless variety or you can get um, ones that have spines. So the ones that I get from the store, you can see they have these spines in them. Uh, they're a pain in the butt. Um, so it's easy to get rid of them now. You just take a little lighter, like here, like a one you would use for your grill. And just run that flame over top and it kind of burns those spines up um, and uh, takes care of it for you. You don't want to, keep that flame on there too long because you don't want to cook the, the cactus pad, but um, just get enough on there to kind of fizzle those spines away. And it works pretty well. Um, a lot of people, including myself, will sometimes feed um, cactus pads with the spines on them. Um, it doesn't seem to hurt the tortoises, uh, but you know, if I have time, I try to get rid of the spines if I can. So you can give them the cactus pads whole like that, or you can chop it up. Uh, you don't need to chop it up, but sometimes it gets them um, to eat it a little bit faster. They get that, that scent on them. And uh, if they're not inclined to eat that, sometimes when you cut it up, it opens the scent up and uh, they go for it quicker. So prickly pear, papuncha, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, is some of the best food that you can feed your tortoises. Uh, it's got, it's loaded with vitamins, and fiber, and all that good stuff. It's great for hydration. It's packed full of water. Uh, so it's got all that nutrients and stuff that you want to feed your tortoises. I'm also feeding them some leftover zucchini that I had from dinner the other night that we didn't cook. And that's good for them too. So the Greek tortoises get the same exact thing as the Hermans because they're a testudo species. And they'll make small work of the cactus pads and the zucchini that I gave them here. So the juveniles get the same things as the adults. So they got some zucchini and some cactus pads in there. Uh, that one's chowing down on some zucchini. It's a relatively cool day today, so they all might not come out to eat right away, uh, but they'll get to it. You have our Hermans over here, our marginated right there. Marginated's making its way up to some uh, cactus pads up there, and they'll make short work of this stuff as well. Our Greek tortoises are never one to turn down a meal. So here comes Ham, one of our Iberia Greeks and the mother of most of our hatchlings. Today's meal is just some spring mix and some chopped squash for them. So your Testuda tortoises are, you know, your, your Greeks, your Hermans, uh, marginated tortoises. 
uh, Egyptians are Testudo, although I don't have any Egyptians, but uh, basically your typical Testudo is from the Mediterranean region. Obviously you can see no fruits in here, just some squash and spring mix just for them today. Obviously the hatchlings and the juveniles get the same exact meal as uh, the adults. So these are our Hermes tortoises. There's one there. A couple more there. Are marginated. And our Greeks. As babies, these testudas are really voracious. They'll just eat everything in sight. So as always, the babies get the same exact food as the adults. So this one's eating some spring mix and some chopped squash as well. The baby Greek tortoises, once they actually start eating, um, they just don't stop eating. They're just like machines. Um, sometimes it takes about a week for them to get to eat, get eaten, but um, they, they get there and then they just don't stop. Okay, so today they're getting just kale and romaine. Very simple. Some folks say you shouldn't feed kale. Um, it's not really not necessarily true. Kale is perfectly fine to feed. It's just not something you should feed every day. Uh, you shouldn't be feeding one thing every day, period, but definitely not kale every day. So. Um, what it is, is it's high in glycogen, so basically that can inhibit the intake of iodine and that could lead to certain issues like thyroid problems and stuff like that. But while it is high in glycogen, it's also high in iodine content, so it kind of evens that out to a certain extent. It contains other vitamins and minerals that's good for the tortoises. Um, it is something I wouldn't feed every day and I don't feed every day, uh, but every couple weeks it's not a bad thing. And just like always, these Hermes tortoises, they devour the romaine right away, but they'll get to that kale eventually. And obviously the Greek tortoises love their kale as well. They get the same exact food every day as the Hermes do. So they got some kale there, some romaine over there, and they'll go through that pile in no time. So not only do I feed the adults the same exact thing every day, as I feed the juveniles, but I'll feed the juvenile testudo, every species the same exact thing every day. So the marginated's got kale and romaine, the, the Greeks got kale and romaine, in fact they're almost done theirs in less than five minutes. I'm telling you, they're machines. And over here, the hermits. They're almost done theirs as well. If they were to venture out, they would see there's a bunch more right there. So today the Greek hatchlings are just getting some romaine and some Missouri. I tend to feed the hatchlings a little bit more Missouri than the adults. Um, so when the adults get it maybe one or two days a week, the hatchlings will get it three, maybe four days a week, but not much more than that. I think the Missouri just helps give them a little bit more of a head start. So that's why they get a little bit more than the others. So, and this is, this is a lot for this little guy, uh, but trust me, they'll eat it. So today we're feeding a little bit different. Today is mustard greens, um, but not just mustard greens. We have to mix this with other things because the tortoises won't eat this uh, on its own. It's got a little bit of a, a, a bite to it. Um, they don't seem to really like it, but it does have some good health components uh, to it. Now, if your tortoises won't eat mustard greens, it's not the end of the world. It's no big deal. Um, but, it, you know, it's just a part of a varied diet. I like to throw as many different things in there as possible, and it is good for them. So, how do we get them to eat it? One, we soak up some Missouri, and we are going to chop this really small. We're going to mix in some red leaf lettuce, and I'm also going to throw in there some green bell peppers. Um, so these uh, green bell peppers are not bad for tortoises either, they're pretty good. Um, it, it's, it, they do have some sugar in them, so it's not something you want to feed to like your testudo all the time. Um, but it's not as bad as feeding like a strawberry to a testudo. Uh, obviously your red foots are good to go. Um, and I just chop these up whole and throw them in there. So we're going to chop all this stuff up now and uh, mix it all together. So chopping things up is definitely not necessary at all, um, but 
when you have things that your tortoise won't eat um, and you want to make sure that they get all that nutrition into them sometimes if you chop it up it all kind of all sticks together and they get a lot more uh, nutrients in one bite in their mouth they're kind of eating things by accident uh, and they can't be as picky so they might like the red leaf lettuce um, and they'll just uh, focus on that definitely the Missouri the Missouri is is a good tool when you have tortoises that love Missouri which most do if it's coated in Missouri then they tend to go for it so I use Missouri as a tool a lot of times just to get them to eat the stuff that I want them to eat and when I feed them peppers, I feed them the whole entire thing, seeds and all. Uh, my tortoises don't love the peppers, but again, if your tortoise is going to be picky and doesn't and won't eat this stuff, you know, find something else. It's not this is not stuff that you have to feed them. It's just I try to provide a good varied diet. So this is how I do it. So now we just mix it all together. Get your hands in there and get that Missouri all over everything. So you can see, it's not a ton of Missouri, but there is a little bit of Missouri touching everything. Uh, so that way, if they want to get to the Missouri, they're going to have to eat all this other stuff, which is a good thing. This is all good stuff for them. No, I'm going to wash my hands. This is gross. All right, so the Hermans are enjoying their mustard green, red leaf lettuce, Missouri pepper diet. And... Uh, it's good to trick they are being tricked into eating the mustard greens with the Missouri, so all is well. Same thing with the Greek tortoises, they're eating it all, they're getting all that good nutrients in every bite, and uh, they're living life happy. Marginanes are living it up, chowing down on some mustard greens. The Hermans, not so much, just the one came out to eat, but the rest will be out eventually. And these Greeks never fail to eat something. So here we have our Greek tortoise, one of the Greek tortoises, ham, chowing down on some collard greens. So here we have just some romaine and some collard greens. And uh, collard greens are another thing you don't want to feed every day. Uh, they're definitely not bad for them, but if you feed too much of it, it could cause some issues. So, you know, once a week, once every couple weeks, collard greens, it just adds to that variety in the diet that you really should be looking for. Her partners in crime are nowhere to be found. They're in here somewhere. Uh, but they'll come out. They'll find it. I try not to um, go grab them and put them in front of the food because if they're not hungry, you know, they don't have to eat. You know, I kind of try, I try to leave it up to them uh, unless I'm noticing that, you know, something's not eating well or something's not doing as well. I want to monitor it. Um, they know where the food comes from. They know where it is. They know generally what I'm going to feed them. So. You know, they usually come out running, running if they're hungry. And Ham is always hungry. And to no one's surprise, the Hermes tortoise adult group is chowing down and will make short work of that pile of food in no time. These guys especially are like piranhas when it comes to feeding time. They just, uh, they inhale it. They do, they literally come running to get the food, especially if it's a warm day or, you know, I skip the feeding here and there. They, uh, they just go right at it. Alright, so as usual, the juveniles get the same exact meal as the adults. So you got a little Herman's tortoise, chowing on some romaine, some Greek tortoises, chowing down on some, that looks like collard greens. We have marginated tortoises. One made its way out. So those Greek tortoises are getting some romaine, some collards, and some uh, clover, some weeds I pulled. And we just got these little guys, these new marginated tortoises, so they got the same exact thing. They just came in yesterday, and uh, they're doing good. But they got romaine, collard greens, and some clover as well. And the Hermes tortoises are racing towards their food. This is what tortoises look like when they race. It's exhilarating. And they're almost there. So as you can see, I'm doing something a little different today. It's really hot out. So once or twice a season, I'll throw in some watermelon 
just to help keep them hydrated. Um, not really worried about them really getting dehydrated too much, but it's been really ungodly hot this summer, so any little bit helps. And that little bit of watermelon is not going to hurt them at all. I don't really suggest giving these types of tortoises fruit at all. Um, the only two exceptions I'll make is the watermelon on days like today. And uh, sometimes some prickly pear fruit. And really, they'll get watermelon maybe twice a year at that. The rest is all pure greens and good stuff for testudo species. The sugars in fruit are really what causes the problems in these types of tortoises. They're, they're not built to digest uh, fruit. So um, that's not that's the reason why you don't want to really feed them too much fruit. They just can't digest it. I mean, they'll eat it all day, but that doesn't mean it's good for them. You can see, they love it. Soak it up because this is pretty much maybe the only time they get it all year. And just like the Hermes tortoises, the Greek tortoises got some dandelion greens and some watermelon. They'll munch on that watermelon first. Savor it because it's pretty much maybe the only time they get it all year. And as usual, same thing for these guys, the underlying greens, a little bit of watermelon, so they uh, can stay hydrated. Marginades are loving it. The Hermans are loving it. And of course, all the Greek tortoises are loving it. Except for that guy back there. He's not loving it just yet, but he will love it soon. So today is radicchio and a little bit of romaine. So as you might tell, I use romaine as almost my base. So. It's not um, de definitely not bad for them, uh, but it definitely can't be um, their only uh, food. Uh, it does have a little bit of vitamins in it, but it's definitely not the only thing that you can feed them. I know I've heard some people use that as their sole feeding source, and that's just uh, not what you want to do. You need to mix it up a little bit. So you can see today I'm feeding off uh, some radicchio to all the tortoises. So for anyone that's not familiar with radicchio, radicchio is that red stuff that you find inside your salads. It's usually cut up and stringy. So it kind of comes in a ball with kind of like a, like a cabbage, but that red and white color. And it's actually part of the chicory family. And chicory, you know, includes endive, escarole, dandelions, and radicchio. So it's got great vitamin content, great fiber content, um, but just like anything, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. So, you know, I would never say radicchio is bad for tortoises, no way. Um, but, you know, if you go and feed radicchio all the time, and that's it, uh, you know, you could end up with certain problems. Same thing with dandelions, believe it or not. So, that could lead to like renal problems and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm talking more like almost every day if that's all you're feeding. And you really shouldn't be doing that. You should be mixing it up uh, here and there anyway. This little marginated decided to start with the romaine. Get the radicchio later. The other two are still being grumpy and in the back there somewhere. Never want to turn down a meal. These Herman's tortoise juveniles are making short sure work of that Romaine and Radicchio right there. Looking good. We got a couple more back here. One there and one right there. And all seven of these Iberic Greek hatchlings that we're growing out are going to town on everything. Making short sure work some good food. I gotta tell you, these Greek hatchlings, well they're not hatchlings anymore, they're yearlings. Uh, they're like machines. They just, they would eat as much as I put in there and not think twice about it. So today's feeding is weeds. So while I have all this nice area and it's pretty much manicured, I keep a lot of this back area kind of goes wild. So we have all kinds of dandelions and then all kinds of stuff. So I basically come up here and this is like a farm of crops for weeds for me, if you can think of it that way, for the tortoises. So I'll pull a bunch of these and this will be their food for the day. So we have our weeds, we got mostly dandelions, but there's some clover, various different kinds of clover in here, uh, some chickweed and all kinds of stuff. So uh, this is their meal for the day. It's total health food for tortoises. And you'll find that not all tortoises love all weeds. So, you know, these Greek tortoises are pretty much, they're not very picky. Um, but they do love their like, dandelions and their clover and stuff like that. Not all weeds are, uh, are for them. 
Um, so, you know, just kind of test it and go, go with that. Right there, she's eating some clover. But this is, like, just total health food for them, this, this kind of stuff. It's got all the vitamins and minerals that they need. It's not processed. I don't use any chemical fertilizers or chemical, um, uh, you know, weed killer. So uh, it's very safe. It's better for them than the store-bought stuff. And uh, it's a good variety in their diet. And I'm thoroughly convinced that these Hermes tortoises, if they could eat cardboard, they would. They eat everything. Um, so here they're eating all those weeds. Makes them nice and big and healthy and strong. And it's good for them too. And just like any good reliable Greek tortoise, these uh, little juvenile Greeks are chowing down on these weeds right away. The Hermans, same thing. Eating away. Add some dandelion, some clover, some plantain. The marginated are still in their holes. It's a little hot right now. They'll come out later. So on the menu today is uh, basically what we just call mush. And that is a mix of Missouri, some Timothy hay pellets, uh, some orchard grass, some hibiscus leaves, and all that fun stuff. They love it. They get this about once a week. I like to feed on these trays when I feed the um, this, this mushy stuff. Uh, if I put it on the block over there, which I sometimes do, but you know, I'm always there the next day trying to scrub it off and, and all that stuff so they don't need leftover stuff. But as you can see, they love it, and uh, maybe they'll get to this tray after they've done that tray. And as usual, the babies, or the kids, or the juveniles, whatever you want to call them, get the same exact thing as the adults, and they will go through this in no time. So this is our Greek juveniles, mostly yearlings in here. There are seven of them in here, but two aren't out yet. Never once to disappoint the Hermans are making short work of their mush hidden amongst the weeds. For some reason, their enclosure is a lot more weedy than the others. They all start out the same. I actually seed all the enclosures with weeds, but I guess these uh, kind of got away from them and they're probably just not weeds that they want to eat. But it offers shade and, and stuff like that. And the marginateds are eaten. They love it. This is a really good growth formula for them. Definitely not something you want to feed every day. Too much of a good thing is not a good thing. Um, so these two are out. There's another one in there somewhere. And he'll come out when he's ready, or she's ready. She's still hiding all the way in the back there. But once she gets a whiff of the food, I'm sure she'll come and run it. Uh, your tortoise will lay on top of its food all the time and get ridiculously dirty. Anyway, um, as you can see with the examples I've shown you, I really try my best to throw in a variety of foods uh, into their diet and to make sure they're not eating the same thing every single day. Uh, variety is really key, and, but variety of the right foods is um, equally as, as important. So, you know, stick to those high fiber, um, really good, high quality produce for your, for your testudo species. No fruit. Um, I did have that one exception where I fed them watermelon. Um, a little bit of squash is not a bad thing, but uh, not every day. Uh, watermelon is uh, good and high in moisture content and on the really hot steamy days that we get up where I am um, it does help replenish some of that moisture and it's a nice little treat. Besides that I don't believe that they need any other treats so no strawberries, no blueberries, no none of that. They don't need any extra protein in their diet. They get everything they need from the plants that they eat. So I really hope you enjoyed these videos. Um, I tried to give you a good idea of how I feed all the testudo tortoises um, over a period of days and um, just to basically show how easy it is to uh, try to give them as well balanced diet as, as you possibly can. So thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye.